Well, good morning, everybody. I just, I just have to say, this is such a cool church. Um, I don't know what I was expecting. I live in East Auckland and Pakaranga, um, but I was set up already by the team here just to know that you guys are such a generous church and that you have a huge heart for your work in Uganda and the Pacific. But just like standing here before the service in your prayer meeting, blown away, listening to your worship, incredible. And looking at all of you, I'm just so grateful to be here. So thank you for having me. Um, and a happy Mother's Day. Um, first and foremost, happy Mother's Day. Not just to birth mums, but to um, foster mums, uh, step mums, grand mums, single mums. I honour you from right from the outset. And today we're actually going to talk about how God is at work through mums all around the world. And I'm going to give you some examples of that. Uh, Just like many of the mums here in this church, I know God is at work in your lives. But I really want to take a zoom out perspective this morning as we look at how God is at work around the world. Um, So this morning, let's get into a story of what he's doing, especially through mums and especially in Uganda. Um, Because, you know, people often think of poverty as a, a hopeless cause or that barely any progress has been made in the fight against injustice. But from my experience and what I've seen, I'd like to show you otherwise. And I hope by the time you leave, you feel encouraged and inspired. So I'm here today with Tia Fund um, as part of a tour called A Celebration of Humanity. And over the last couple of weeks, I've been traveling around the North Island, sharing about my work as a humanitarian photographer and storyteller. Um, I've traveled to about 40 different countries and worked for around 50 different NGOs or charities. So everyone from the UN to World Vision, Red Cross. My job is to bring their work to life for their donors. Um, And during that tour, I've been taking people kind of behind the lens and onto the front lines of some of our planet's most challenging places. Um, And I'm going to be doing a keynote address actually on Thursday this week in Green Lane. uh, But And you're welcome to come to that. Today is just a little sampler for you guys, especially in Pukakari. Now, first up, my family can't can't go this far and not... Oh, sorry about the stretch imagery. Uh, But you'll get the picture. Uh, So this is my family. Uh, Tim and I have been married for 16 years, and we lived and worked in Uganda uh, for seven of those and the Middle East um, as well. We've got three kids. They're aged, I don't know why I need to look at my notes. I know this off by heart. (laughs) Uh, They're six, seven, and nine, and we also have a foster son um, who is one year old. Um, Yeah, so we adopted Hope when she was just six days old. She's the kind of kid that has 10 books on the go at once. Um, She sleeps year-round with a hot water bottle, uh, and she hates salad. Uh, The other day, she said to me, she was, I was trying to get her to clean her room for like the 15th time, and she just like sassed back at me with, why don't you just go eat a salad or something? (laughs) Um, Eva, I find her outside all the time, upside down on gymnastics rings. Um, She told me recently that how I drive is emotional damage for her. Um, And then she asked me why I had whiskers. We also adopted Maz as a baby. Uh, He's the kind of kid that likes to side tackle me without warning. Uh, Recently swallowed a marble. Um, He enjoys beetroot from a can. Uh, And we think he would be um, our best chance at New Zealand's first all black, all black. Um, I actually have one more thing to tell you about this. Recently, we were driving to church, um, and we said to him, hey, what have you been learning about in Sunday school? Um, What have they been telling you about Jesus? And he goes, about who? I'm sure that would never happen here at Revive Church. And my littlest love, baby A, is absolute perfection and can do no wrong, um, other than when he woke me up every hour on the hour uh, for the first 10 months of his life. Uh, But baby A now lives with his birth family, but we do respite care for him once a month. So, considering it's Mother's Day, I want to encourage you um, with the... Are we on to that? Yes, we are. (laughs) This warped imagery is really going to be fun for us this morning. (laughs) I want to encourage you with the progress being made around the world. Um, And I'm going to give you an example of a mum that amazed me recently. I'm also going to show you a photojournalism assignment. I've been working on for the last five years, 
And then I'm going to give you a personal challenge on Mother's Day. So who is Tia Fund, in case you don't know? Tia Fund works all over the world, and um, we actually do three main things. The first is disaster relief. Uh, the second is community development. And then child sponsorship through our partner, Compassion International. Uh, some of the things you might find Tia Fund doing are working to prevent modern slavery or um, anti-human trafficking work. Uh, we help people get back on their feet with savings and self-help groups and provide farming and enterprise training to tens of thousands of people. You'll find us here in refugee settlements helping people find a safe place to stay as they flee violence and political unrest in their home countries. Like this one in Bangladesh, hosting one million people in 10 square kilometers. You'll find us on the ground working through our local partners whenever a major disaster hits, like here after a cyclone in Vanuatu. And you'll find us staying in an area for years, decades sometimes, helping farmers yield the most they can from their land as they learn best practice techniques and share them wider. So what progress has been made? Well, first up, in the last 20 years alone, there has been a huge decline in the share of the world's population living on less than $2 a day. It used to be 37% in 1990, and now it's under 9%. Also, access to safe drinking water has increased from 61% to 71%. Incidences of malaria have dropped by 66% globally. And even better, there's now a vaccine for malaria. Furthermore, the number of under fives dying from pneumonia has decreased by 55% globally. Now, I remember meeting this woman called Oliver um, in Uganda, and her story really stood out to me because for me, it embodies what empowerment looks like. So I'm gonna quote her here. She, she told me, I used to feel like a useless woman in my home. My husband and I were always fighting. She talked about how she relied on him for absolutely everything and they had five kids. And he would complain to his friends about, about her. One day she heard that there was going to be a self-help savings and loans group coming into her area. And she didn't even have a cent in her pocket to join the group. But she decided to see if she could earn even just a tiny amount of money to get into the group. So that night at dinner time, she did not eat her cassava portion. Instead, she saved it and went to the market and just sold one portion of cassava and got into the group this way. A few weeks later, she'd managed to um, save enough money by buying some vegetables with that profit uh, to put beans on the table for dinner that night for her family. And everyone was a bit like, okay, okay. A few weeks later, she managed to save enough money to put fish on the table for her family for dinner that night. And everyone by this stage was kind of starting to notice. And her husband kind of said, hey, um, where are you getting this money from? And she talked about how she joined with a group of other young ladies and together they were borrowing and loaning each other money and saving towards different things. A few weeks later, he came home from work and there was a shirt on his bed that she had bought for him, the very first gift she'd ever been able to buy for her husband. Um, and he, she put it on the bed and he's like, all right, let's get behind the savings idea. Well, fast forward about a year. What has this woman managed to do? She's managed to build a concrete foundation for her home, put a solar powered, one solar powered light on the front of her house, and she's managed to put iron sheeting on the roof, and her savings now pay for all five of their kids to go to school. What an incredible mama. You know, the strength and resilience of the woman I meet never ceases to amaze me. Their stories range from experiences of tremendous hope and joy to deep trauma and unfathomable loss, but each bears the unmistakable image of God and how they nurture, love, and sacrifice for their children. And I just want to also take this moment to acknowledge all the mums in this room who also fight for a better future for their families every single day. As I mentioned earlier, you know, Tier Fund partners with Compassion to provide school fees, medical care, and supplementary food to over 2.2 million kids in 27 countries. But 
something happened uh, in the past few years that we were realizing a number of kids weren't even making it to five when they'd be eligible for sponsorship. So Compassion started something called the Survival Project, or Mums and Bugs, as we call it in New Zealand. And this project intervenes right from the earliest stages of pregnancy, about 12 weeks, to ensure vulnerable mums living in poverty are given the correct nutrition, the right medical care, and the support of the local church to help them after birth, right the way through to their child's first birthday, and then up to five. It's kind of like Plunkett here in New Zealand, but super charged. Um, and five years ago, they asked me to bring this assignment to life. And so I did that by following three Uganda mums from their pregnancy through to their child's first birthday and called the assignment the first hello. Now, on the girls' first birthdays, when they became available for full-time sponsorship, of course I had to get the matching clothes. How could I not? I handed them each a card asking if our family could be their ongoing sponsor. And in January this year, uh, I got to go back. So let's have a quick look of this video. Thank you. 
consent. So the old term basically advocates through this long procedural program of consent planning, we say how can we ask to go back to the data set? And they are able to do that in a convention that I can have the same program as the planning that I can have the same From old data that was from this team to the bottom of my skull, but this program is working and it's needed and it's You know, this assignment, if I'm honest, really helped me break down a divide I had created in my mind between me and them. It showed me the common humanity we all share. And actually, throughout that year that I followed this family, these families, I found them to be mums just like me, with kids just like mine. And I discovered there's really no difference in what we want for our children, only in what we can give them. You know, I've visited and engaged with a lot of development projects around the world in a range of different contexts. I've also had a, a lot of time to think hard about the question, what can we do? I believe one of the best ways we can engage is actually through child sponsorship. And it is not shiny. It's not fast. It's not new. But my goodness, does it work. And one piece of proof is to look at these three mums and their kids. You know, Juliet and Christine, when I, and I'm just hoping you guys are following. Yeah, okay, great. When I first met Juliet, life was tough, yet stable. But when her husband's drug and alcohol addiction took over a few years later, that safety net collapsed. Because there is no government support or benefit for people in Uganda, Juliet told me the only reason she felt comfortable, comfortable to leave her husband because she knew that near where her mum lived, there was a compassion project she could actually transfer Christine to. With a global pandemic bubbling away in the background, that project then wrapped itself around the two of them, providing essentials as she went back into the workforce. Juliet told me that without sponsorship, her and Christine would have lived a hopeless life. She also told me she's learned to pray at her local church. She's become a Christian, and that praying gives her hope for the challenges that come her way. Today... This little girl, Christine, will be the first female in her entire family to go all the way through school. And at this point, that's only possible because of sponsorship. You know, Kate and Pamela, well, sponsorship got Kate through one of the toughest periods of her life when her husband walked out on her. It paid for those medical bills to give birth, food when they had little, and an entire year of learning new skills at the church to earn an income. When Pamela turned one, sponsorship provided her with bed sheets and blankets, books, soap, and food. And today, it means she's able to go to a great local school and get extra tuition and support for her studies on the weekends at the local project. Best of all, she tells me that sponsorship was the main reason her family is now back together. Because having seen how well Kate was doing and how much life had improved because of it, her husband and her have been back together now for four years. I actually want to pause on the story for just a second because um, when I arrived at church, I spoke to your pastor, Craig, about some of the locations that your church already sponsors, you know, those 50 kids in. And one of the locations is Kate's project, Kasangati. So I've actually been here, I don't even know, maybe 10 times. My whole family's been here. That photo of all of them in the matching clothes, that was taken at a project this church supports. What are the chances of that with over 120,000 kids in Uganda sponsored? Uh, Mama Rahuma and Faith. I actually took my daughter Eva to, uh, with me to visit them as Eva is the one that um, has Faith as her sponsor friend. They go along so, so well. It's super cute. Of course, also bought them matching dresses. There's a, you can't see it there, but there's a really sweet shot of them. Um, okay, Rahuma. When I first met Rahuma, she had recently married her childhood sweetheart and was about to give birth. But over the years, her husband's gambling and alcohol addiction had taken over, and now she found herself as a single mom in a slum in Uganda. But as I went back to visit her, I couldn't help but notice the difference between her and Faith and the others living nearby. So in this particular slum, there's like a boarding house. Um, so there's maybe like 10 families that live there, and most of them were single moms. Um, and I just noticed such a difference between Rahuma and Faith and all the other mums and their kids. And I, I, I think I, I put it down to this. 
Um, Rahuma was gifted with a peace of mind for her and her child that was so significant. She said, I don't want to ever lose the opportunity to have faith in this program. I can't risk it. I feel so grateful because I know other single moms in this area don't receive this kind of help. The support at the church is overwhelming. That's why I'm crying. You know, unlike the kids in her neighborhood, Faith has a mom that knows the Compassion Project and her sponsor have her back. And I wish the kids in her neighborhood could be sponsored. And we've actually got some of them here today. Amos 5.24 says this. Do you know what I want? I want justice, oceans of it. I want fairness, rivers of it. That's what I want. That's all I want. I think about that verse a lot. And it's great that baby Christine and Pamela and Faith have been sponsored. But the reason I'm here this morning is to ask Revive Church to help me ensure their little friends are sponsored too. You know, I love speaking in churches about Compassion's model because it is entirely born out of the church. It's child-focused, Christ-centered, and church-based. And I'm just going to explain that because you guys already sponsored 50 kids. So let's talk about Kasangati and how that works real quick. I'm going to break it down. So... What happens is that Compassion Head Office works out where are the areas, the pockets, the communities that are the most impoverished in this nation. Then they go to the area and they ask all the pastors if they would like to become part of a Compassion, uh, it's called a Child Development Program. And the pastors get together, some of them decide we'd like to apply. So let's just say Kasangati Church was one of those that applied. Head Office staff come along, they check, okay, Great, um, you've got a cool church here. Do you, do you already have a kids ministry? Oh, cool, you do. Do you have a space for the kids? Cool, you do. Okay, um, and then they go through a big application process making sure they're above board and have got a good support system behind them. Then the church works with the likes of Oranga Tamariki, the social um, networks, uh, the local schools, to identify the 250 children in the area that are the most vulnerable. So that means Kasangati Church went door to door looking for families that would be a good fit for this project. Then they invite all those families to the church and say, this is what we're hoping to do in your neighborhoods. We're going to teach them about Jesus Uh, We're going to provide these things. And if you'd like to join, uh, you can sign up here today. So then those kids sign up and they come to the church every single Saturday. Uh, They begin with praise and worship. It's the funnest thing ever to watch that happen. Then they break off into groups for their ages and they have extra tuition. They've got like an emotional, physical, spiritual um, curriculum that they do. They have morning tea. They have lunch. They play with their friends in a safe space. Um, And if any of them get sick or there's any issue, like mum lost her job, the church wraps itself around that family. Um, One of the things I like the most, though, is that you rock up to a church, you rock up to Kasangati, you will not see any mention of tier funds. And the only way you'll know it's a compassion project is because it will say UG519, which is a little code. And so do you know what that says to the local community? The local church is the hero here. Not compassion, not tear fund. You, the local church, are working in your community and all we do is come behind you and support you to do what you already wanted to do but didn't have the resources for. Mother Teresa is credited with this. The problem with our world is that we draw the circle of our family too small. Sponsorship, if you let it, is about bringing your family alongside another family. So who are the Kiwis that sponsor kids? Well, there's Rebecca and Jonathan Brake. You know, their sponsored child, Ronald, uh, wrote to them to see if they'd walk him down the aisle because he had no living parents, and they did. Susan flew from Auckland to Africa to be there on her sponsored child, Adela's big day. Stephen, a young Kiwi professional who sponsored a child as a single guy. The Ward family, they wanted their kids to grow up alongside other children living in poverty. And so they sponsored kids that had the same birthdays as their kids. The Harpers had their business sponsor 30 kids. And the Coleman's have visited all three of their sponsor daughters. And as incredible as that is, all of these people are one small but important part in helping transform a child's life because they're not the hero of this story. Here are all the people 
involved in helping their sponsored child, Violet. And if you sponsor a child today, this is what your photo would look like too. Because here's Violet's parents, the pastor at the local church, the social worker, the cook, the head office staff, and the Coleman's. So what happens to these kids after they finish the program? Well, to answer that, I can't help but think of Lillian, who was orphaned at five months and endured tremendous abuse as she grew up. At nine, she was sponsored and went on to get a university degree. And today, she's a married mum of two that owns her own home and works full-time as a tour guide. And there's Richmond. He grew up in a slum after his father was murdered. He was sponsored by a 15-year-old teenager. And today, this man runs the biggest pastor training ministry in all of Uganda. He's also got a um, one-year-old daughter and travels globally to speak about his story. You know, guys, I know from almost 15 years of working with the poor that the real root of poverty lies well beneath a lack of clean water, food, and medical care. It's the message it breathes into the lives of even very little children. And that message is give up. Nobody cares about you and nothing will ever change. Of course, the surrounding circumstances contribute to that worldview. But when that hopeless life message finds root in a child's heart, the spirit of that child begins to shrivel. The twinkle is gone. The fire goes out. But with the local church, our staff and sponsors like you, we can fan those embers until flame bursts forth. I want you to get this, this next three sentences. Sponsorship enables entire families' histories to be reorientated and transformed, for souls to be eternally affected and trajectories of children's lives forever changed. It is a beautiful thing to see an infusion of love and hope reverse a downward spiral. You know, when I was asking God about what he, what he wanted me to share with you this morning, I felt like he told me three things. Firstly, to share with you about tear funds, specifically giving you that example about how the church is such an amazing hero in that story. Um, and secondly, he gave me this picture. I think it so beautifully sums up God's heart for sponsorship. And he gave me this verse in 1 Peter 4.15. Everything in the world is about to be wrapped up, so take nothing for granted. Stay wide awake in prayer. I've seen you guys do that here. Most of all, love each other as if your life depended on it. Love makes up for practically anything. Be quick to give a meal to the hungry, a bed to the homeless, cheerfully. Be generous with the different things God gave you passing them around so all get in on it. If words, let it be God's words. If help, let it be God's hearty help. That way, God's bright presence will be evident in everything through Jesus, and he'll get all the credit as the one mighty in everything, on cause, till the end of time. One of the key ways we can engage with this passage is what we do with the people who are a lot less fortunate than ourselves. So this morning, in case you missed it, it's Mother's Day. And I'm asking you in that spirit to make a Mother's Day by first and foremost considering sponsoring a child or making room for just one more. As we begin to close, I want to play you a song. Uh, it's a beautiful Christian song that's been going around, around in my head for months now. And just listen to the words. They're so poignant. I've actually set it to some photos of the first Hello Mums and Kids over the last five years. And on your seat this morning, you would have found a flyer with a QR code on it. If you scanned it, you could have a quick look online at some of the kids we have for sponsorship. But we've also got a table down the back with physical profiles of kids from projects this church is already supporting. And our team are there to help if you're looking for a child with a certain birthday or you just want to sponsor a teenager with a few more years left. And if sponsorship isn't an option for you right now, perhaps you might consider supporting our amazing Mums and Bubs program for that one critical year of life. And if both of those are out of reach, 
could I encourage you to maybe consider buying a photographic print or giving a donation at the service with all proceeds supporting the work of TF Fund around the world? I understand how easy it is to move from empathy to apathy. Most of society, even really caring people, feel that they cannot do everything that needs to be done and so they become paralyzed. They end up doing nothing. But I believe every single one of us in this room has the power to do one thing this morning. And I know that's gonna make a powerful difference in the life of another. It has been such a wonderful privilege to speak to you and I'm genuinely grateful for the opportunity to be invited to share. Let's watch this final video. Thank you. It always um, <laughs> brings back my memories of when I was there in 2019. And as I watched these poor little girls, three and four years of age, being tested for STDs because they're selling themselves to survive. You can't sit back and do nothing. You can't sit back and do nothing. I want to encourage you, sponsor a child today. Oh, I don't really have the money. You know, there's something that Trinity shared with me yesterday about the early church that is challenging me to the core right now. And is this, a non-Christian observer of the early church wrote this. When people had no food, Christians would fast for three days and give the food they would have eaten to the poor so that they would have food. And it's really challenging me because you know to sponsor a child just means fasting one day a, one day a month, just going without breakfast, lunch and dinner, one day a month sponsors a child. Oh, I can't not eat. Yeah, you can, you'll survive. You can go 40 days without food. But you know what I mean? Like, like what are we, I don't know, don't want to put a dampener on you, but, but what are we prepared to do to see lives transformed? And I think we have to ask ourselves, do we really need some of the stuff that we need? Yeah? The Bible says this, that all that stuff that we think we need is all wood, hail, and stubble. But what survives the test is the precious stones. And this is precious stones. These are children of the Most High God. They're our brothers and our sisters. And we can't not help them when we can so easily. So I want to encourage you. While you're eating the chocolate brownie that you're going to enjoy, sponsor a child so they too can enjoy a life that transforms, not just them, but it's their whole family. And I want to encourage you, we can do this, church. We can do it, we can do it, and we're always going to do it. God bless you so much. Thank you for coming out. Sorry to make you emotional towards the end. I'm holding back tears too. But you know why? Because it breaks God's heart, it should break our heart. If we're a follower of Christ, it should break our heart too. Let me just quickly pray for you before I release you. Father, we thank you so much for what you're doing in our lives, but we pray and we thank you for the great work that Tear Fun and Compassion are doing all over the world. God, I pray that people's hearts will be completely open, not just here today, but everywhere they go, to do something that changes lives. We thank you for Helen and Tim's life as they've been able to bring this to life for us. I pray that your goodness and grace and mercy and compassion will be upon them and let it be upon us, especially our mums today as we go. And God, let stir us, stir us in the very core of our being to be people that say, you know what, I don't mind sacrificing to make sure somebody else succeeds. And so God, I pray that you would Help us to be all that you've asked us to be and be people of compassion just like you were. In Jesus' name, amen. Awesome. Hey, stick around, get to know us.
grab a coffee, look at the sponsor table, buy a print, look at the photos down the back, enjoy your chocolate brownie, and we'll see you all back here next Sunday. God bless.